Though you usually, you like attention though. Yes, I crave it, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm more low key nowadays. Yeah? Mm-hmm, more focused on fighting. Um, I know you talked about being underestimated as a striker, but how about, you know, just kind of being underestimated, period? I mean, this was kind of an up and, up and coming fighter and, and you might have been overlooked just in general. Yeah, I think I was overlooked um, for sure. I kind of thrive off of being the underdog because then it's like, oh, I have nothing, I have nothing to lose. But in my mind, I knew that I was in the underdog, and I knew my coaches and my team, and any anyone who's who's around me knew that I wasn't the underdog. Um, I think that I had one bad performance, which clearly I've come back from. You know, the Paige Van Zant fight was just. You know, they say sometimes it's just not your night, but for years and years of fighting, I've just, I didn't have anything left to give because I, 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 I wore my body out so much. And then when I got into the fight, I just, I just crashed. And um, that's why I took 15 months off because I, you know, I worked with a performance doctor, Dr. Cowan, and um, we did extensive labs and I got, you know, my body back to feeling good again. And, and I started feeling like the fighter that I always knew I was. And I think that people judged me off that one per performance and thought, instead of thinking, hey, maybe there's something wrong with Felice, um, they thought, oh, maybe she's just old and washed up. <laughs> and, and I think that sometimes the veterans in the sport actually get overlooked because, you know, we're not these young up and coming fighters that you can market. So it's, it's like we kind of get left behind and like forgotten about. And I wanted to prove that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm here to stay. Like, I never went anywhere. I, you know, I, I fell down. I, I got back, back up again, and I, and I came back stronger. I mean, wouldn't you say that, that, that uh, experience trumps youth a lot of times anyways? I mean, that seems to kind of be able to work in your advantage, especially in the next few years. I think it does, but I also think that um, sometimes when you're a fighter um, and you have the experience, if, if you don't, if it takes a toll on your on your on your body and your mind, and you don't think no necessarily know something's wrong, and you don't know how to fix it, then you keep going down this this downhill slope, this downhill slope. And I probably I knew like when I performed against Paige, I was like I I don't know what happened. I couldn't move. My body just couldn't move. And um, my doctor had reached out to my manager because he um, worked with a lot of fighters, and he's like, there's you know there's there's something wrong you know with Felice and her levels. And I can fix her. I can help her. And and I think that if I hadn't gotten fixed, then I I probably just would have kept going on a downward slope and been somebody's stepping stone. I think that that's what you know happens with the the people with the experience they use as um, somebody to build these young up and comers. And that's how I felt. I felt like I was. I mean, I was a three to one underdog, so I was definitely overlooked. Um, I didn't mind it. I. I I kind of don't really pay too much attention to that stuff anymore. Of course, I knew about it, and I was like, well, you know, that's fine. I'm going to show everyone I'm not the underdog. I'm here to stay. I didn't go anywhere. I had a bad, you know, I had one bad fight, and I hit rock bottom, and it, and it was good for me because it, it made me realize that I needed to make some adjustments. We talked about, you know, her potentially overlooking your striking. Do you feel like there was any point that you hit her with anything in the fight where she – realized, oh man, I, 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 may have, uh, I may have bitten off more than I can chew here. Uh, you know, I can't speak on Grasso's behalf because I wasn't inside her head, but um, I definitely could see it on her face that when I hit her, she, she knew she was in a fight, and um, I, I expected that. I anticipated it. I know I, I know I can hit hard, and I know I can strike, and uh, I think that now that I don't have all this anxiety, um, <laughs> I went in there more calm and more patient and more relaxed, and I wasn't just going in there seeing red and and um, putting myself in bad situations. Um, I don't, like like I said, I don't. I actually don't try to. I try not to pay too much attention to the media or what she's saying, or what she's thinking. I don't listen to any of, you know, my opponent's interviews because I I know sometimes whatever she thought, that's fine. I I expected that she, you know. Believed her own hype, and and rightfully so. She's a great fighter. I was, I was, you know, she kept me on my toes. I knew that it was going to be a tough fight, um, but I knew I knew I could handle it. And I don't, 
I don't necessarily, you know, my record doesn't necessarily prove like what I'm about. Um, it's it's not a fantastic record, but I fought some of the top girls, you know, in my division and in one and two weight divisions above me. Um, so if you do your research, you got to know that uh, probably going to be in for a fight. But I think, again, she probably thought she was fighting the fighter that fought Paige Van Zant, mm -hmm. and then I fought Kylan Curran, and I didn't get to show much because it was over and under two minutes. Yeah. What felt better tonight or or the current fight? I mean, the current fight you got to do at home, and, and it was that great feeling. And, and you know, this was a dominant, but in a different way. Um, they were both satisfying in their own way. Um, the Kylan current fight was it was great. It was in my hometown. It was um, it was the the turning point fight for me. It, it showed me that hey, you know, I I still I still am that fighter that I always knew I was and always knew I could be. I just had to to adjust a few things, and it was great because I wasn't, you know, I didn't have all these scratches on my face, but I look pretty cool at the airport, so. <laughs> but um, I think just this this fight is definitely more satisfying because Grasso was, you know, an up-and-comer, and I was a three-to-one underdog, and I know she was supposed to beat me, and she was supposed to be this rising star, and um, I got to be the one to stop the... the undefeated girl you know so it it feels really nice you had two pretty you know serious call outs there at the end if do you feel like if regardless of of which one of those two you got if you got it uh and won are you right there in the title picture or do you do you not even think about that kind of thing right no now? i just think about one fight at a time um i don't i don't like to jump ahead too much i just want to be in the present and um think about what's what's in front of me right now um even now, you know, I don't, I don't know who I'm going to fight. I would, I would hope that the UFC would, would do the right thing and give me either Paige or Michelle Waterson because, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't vocal about it, but I was offered the Waterson fight in um, Sacramento, and um, I accepted it. And then two weeks later, I had it taken away from me and given to Paige. And um, that was a fight I've actually, people I don't think know, but I was on um, a reality show with... Uh, Michelle Watterson, it was a it was a Muay Thai show, Master Tati's Fight Girls, long time ago, like 10 years ago. And um, I had been trying to fight her in a Muay Thai fight ever since then, and then an MMA. So she's a fight that I've always I've always wanted. And when I call these people out, it's not in a disrespectful way, you know. I just I feel really confident in myself again, and um, I feel that you know I would like to to climb the ranks and um, show people what I can do, and you know fight these fights that I want. <laughs> you mentioned that the reason you were taking time off was to sort of recover mentally. <clears throat> you made a statement about your cortisone levels and things like that being low. Uh, do you attribute that to the, the frequency of your fighting? And do you feel that, that can, or fighting too much can contribute to things like that? Fighting too much definitely can contribute, but I also think that... Um, for a lot of years, I've 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 been in my own head, and I'm also a very I'm very hard on myself. So every fight was never good enough for me. Every fight, you know, fights that I won, and then every camp, I always I always felt I had to top myself. And I was I've I'm a very like OCD, like obsessive person. I always thought, okay, I gotta diet harder, I gotta train harder, I gotta train more. And every and when you're fighting so often, and like you always have to top yourself and sometimes like it's it's too much you know like too much of anything is is not good and I think I just found um I found the balance you know and um I think my poor performance suffered a lot over the years because I uh you know a lot of fighters the weight cut is mentally stressful and again thinking uh, less is more, or more is more. Like I would eat less and less and less, and and I, and I didn't fuel up right after weigh-ins or anything. And I just would go in there and just kind of hope for the best, hope that my training would pay off. And um, I forgot the question. <laughs> uh, last one. I, I know you don't expect to take that uh, large amount of time off. For you, what's uh, a good amount of fights to have per year? Um. You know, I want to say, oh, put me back in there. I want to fight a lot. I want to fight often. But that's what got me to the point to 
being burnt out, you know, um, I have over 50 fights now. I have a pretty extensive career between MMA and kickboxing. I've been doing it for 14 years. Um, ideally, I, I, I would be happy fighting twice a year. Um, I know that's probably not what the UFC wants. Um, I'm not saying that, no, I'll, no UFC, I'm only going to fight in six months. Don't call me to fight in three. Um, I'm not saying that's going to happen. But, you know, that's a good pace for me. I can, I can manage that. I can handle it. And, you know, I've also dedicated my life to this sport, and I feel that, you know, I can, um, I, sometimes I just want to live my life now. And I know it sounds like, oh, what are you not disciplined? You don't love fighting. No, I love fighting. Like I said, I've, I've dedicated my youth to this sport. Um, started when I was 18. And uh, now sometimes I just want to enjoy my life a little bit. So twice a year is good. <laughs>